Look, let's just get this out of the way. Yes, the way in which you charge this mouse is insanely idiotic. Like, whoever was at the design team that approved this needs to get fired. In reality, it's not that big of a deal, but still look extremely silly, and for a forward-thinking company like Apple, you'd think they'd find a better solution to this. I'll brush up on this aspect much later on, but for what it's worth, this Magic Mouse 2 does its job well. It does have some faults, and in most cases, the Magic Trackpad 2 is vastly superior. I actually reviewed the Magic Trackpad 2 in my prior video, so click the card on the top right to check it out. But what you came for is to determine whether the Magic Mouse 2 is for you, so without wasting any more time, we're gonna hop straight into this unboxing. So just like the other Magic accessories, the unboxing experience is typical Apple. You have your image of your mouse front and center accompanied by Magic Mouse branding alongside two Apple logos flanking both sides with nothing much going on on the top and bottom. If we flip our box over, we see we have some barcodes and some basic system requirements to ensure your mouse will be compatible with your Mac. Choosing out of my many assortment of cutting tools is always tricky, but find whatever you can to slice open the plastic since we have no pull tab, remove the plastic, and your box comes right off and there she is. Your Magic Mouse 2 is as clean and as shiny as it will probably ever be. We'll set this off to the side for now and dig deeper into the contents of our package. We'll see we get some product and warranty information guide, as well as a quick start guide that shows you how easy it is to set this thing up so that you can get straight to work. And beneath that is this super cool black USB to lightning cable. This cable is color coded to whichever mouse you get, so if you get the white mouse, you'll get the white lightning cable. But now, going over to the star of the show, ladies and gentlemen, there she is, our Magic Mouse 2. And now just going over a quick tour of the device. Immediately noticeable is how minimal the design is with this touch sensitive glass surface that allows for certain gestures. The mouse doesn't have your traditional left and right click buttons, rather it is one singular click. That doesn't mean the right click function is gone, just look under settings to check out all the gestures. Underneath we'll find our cold aluminum enclosure, along with these newly updated black plastic rails that creates friction and stability for your mouse. The rails enable enough friction so that it doesn't feel like you're moving it across butter while also having enough resistance so that it feels nice and smooth to use. And coming in at roughly 90 grams, this is one of the lightest mice I've ever used. Towards the top, we see we have our optical sensor, and unfortunately, this mouse cannot be used on a glass surface. The optical sensor is too primitive to do such a thing, so it makes me wonder, what's so magic about it? Anyway, to the right of the optical sensor is your on-off switch, which doesn't have a light indicator. Instead, you just have this bright green sticker underneath the switch that lets you know if it is in the on or off position. You have your obligatory Apple logo right in the middle, and all the way at the bottom is your color-coded lightning connector, which... <sighs> I know, I know, is a terrible design choice since it renders the mouse useless while charging. But I think the problem isn't as bad as most people would make it out to seem. Don't get me wrong, it's really stupid. But when you really think about it, the Magic Mouse 2 has an insanely good battery, lasting me about a month and a half on a full 100% charge before it's completely depleted. That means, once a month or so, just plug this mouse up to get recharged overnight and you'll never have to worry about this pesky inconvenience. Best yet, the Magic Mouse gets a whopping 9 hours of juice in a quick 2-3 to three minute charge. This means that while you're working and gotta take a Mondo Duke and blow up your toilet, you'll get enough juice to last you through a working day or two even. It's nice to have this fast charging capabilities in case you're completely out of power and need to finish your assignment or project. The Magic Mouse 2 comes standard with most Mac purchases, namely the iMac, iMac Pro, and Mac Pro. It can be found in one of three colors but only two are available to pick up off the shelf. The black on silver variant is currently only exclusive to the new 2019 Mac Pro. Otherwise, you get your choice of silver and white or space gray. I don't know if it's just me, but does the space gray have a slightly bluer tint to it as compared to the Mac Pro black on silver mouse? I might just be tripping, but you guys let me know in the comments what you think. And just like the trackpad, the space gray Magic Mouse will actually cost more, coming in at $99 while the white Magic Mouse is only $79. Again, I still find that weird. I think whatever color you decide should cost the same, but Apple just loves to show what about the space gray color and how pro it is or whatever. So I guess if you want the black color, you better have pro pockets since it'll cost you. 
ergonomically though, it's tough. It's tough if you have big hands like myself, since the mouse is way too small for my liking. The mouse measures in at 4.5 by 2.3 by 0.9 inches and is roughly comparable to the size of a small mango. What tends to happen is a lot of hand cramps from trying to cram your gigantic hands onto the surface and use the gestures comfortably. Using the scrolling gesture starts to become bothersome after a while since you'll really have to stretch those hands and fingers in order to do so. Put it this way, if you can palm a basketball, you'll struggle using this mouse, especially on pro level applications. Don't even get me started on that. Trying to edit on Final Cut Pro with this was a nightmare. The Magic Trackpad is vastly superior in this regard. But for those with average to small hands, or even for quick use for light web browsing, the mouse is great. Just do be warned about those hand cramps, man, they're no joke. And speaking of the gestures, there's a wide variety of different gestures you can take advantage on with this mouse to navigate your way through Mac OS. The selection isn't as broad as the ones on the Magic Trackpad, but for the most part, you'll know if you're going to be a mouse person or a trackpad kind of person. The glass surface feels really cool to scroll on rather than your traditional mechanical wheel. Simply rub one finger gently across the glass surface to scroll up or down on a page. In settings you can see all the different gestures, for example, you can get your secondary click going. Just click on the right half of the mouse to perform a right click. You can do smart zoom by double tapping, not clicking, with one finger to zoom in and out of a web page. Swipe with two fingers on the glass surface to switch between full screen apps and a few other others. It really does create a unique experience with you and your Mac and the integration of these gestures with Mac OS works exceptionally well. Just be careful as some of these gestures are occasionally accidentally activated when you don't want them, but happens rarely so it's not that big of a deal. The compatibility for Mac machines is the same as with the Magic Trackpad. I'll throw a list of all of them on screen right now. You can use this with an iMac, a Mac Pro, or any MacBook model so long as your system is Bluetooth enabled and has OS 10 version 10.11 or later, which will be the majority of modern Macs and MacBooks. I think as a MacBook Pro companion, this is excellent. This is the bee's knees, man. You'll get the best of both worlds that way. You'll have your already integrated trackpad on the MacBook Pro and the mouse to accompany it. You can switch back and forth to whatever vibe you're trying to fill, whether it be your traditional desktop feel, or if you just want to go ham on that trackpad. What's crazy is that there's even a hidden feature for the iPads. You can actually use this mouse on it. It's kind of crazy and is pretty well hidden within the menus. I'm trying this on the iPad Pro, so I'm not sure about the other ones, but may leave a pinned comment later on if you guys want to figure out if it'll work for your iPad. Basically, head over to settings, then hit accessibility, then hit switch controls, and under Bluetooth devices, your Magic accessory should pop up. This even works for the Magic trackpad and even the Magic keyboard, so it's really cool. The clicker is a bit bigger than on a traditional desktop, and you can't really scroll with the scroll gesture on it, but hey, you're using a mouse on an iPad. You do have to turn on assistive touch for this method to work, though, and it's evident Apple isn't really advertising this thing to be used with the mouse, as it is a bit finicky at times, almost like it's in a secret beta stage, but yeah, there you have it. Ultimately, do I think this mouse is worth it? It depends. I mean, if you want this mouse to simply browse the internet and not be so heavy on creating content or projects, then you should be fine. It gets the job done just fine. But for longer sessions, especially those with big hands, I would advise to look elsewhere or pick up the Magic Trackpad instead. There is no sense of depth with the mouse either like you do with the trackpad. There's no force touch on this mouse, eliminating that extra layer of navigation that you'd otherwise get if you'd have picked up the trackpad. The mouse is just too small for my liking, gives me cramps after extended periods of use, and is just finicky to use while video editing. Not to mention the idiotic way in which it charges. It's not one of my favorite Apple accessories, but certainly isn't the worst. It's still a mouse at the end of the day and is your main tool to navigate through your Mac. But for a starting price of $79, you can spend slightly more and get yourself a really nice mouse with better ergonomics, a much more sensible way to charge while in use, and perhaps other features that are absent on Apple's mouse. Whatever the case, I hope this video was informative and I truly hope you enjoyed it. If you found this video useful, you already know what to do. Exit your full screen right now and smash that like button and also consider subscribing for more tech content just like this. But if you thought it sucked, you know what you can do. Until next time guys, take care of yourselves and each other and have a great day. Peace!